Hello and welcome to Money Life. This is Sucheta Dilal. Today we are going to discuss two orders, one from the NCLT Bombay and another from the Supreme Court, that seem to have again revived some hope among a few Indians that things are going to change. As in, the massive corruption, collusion that we constantly deal with, maybe people are finally going to get a little careful, a little worried about what's going to happen. Let me analyze these two orders. One was Videocon and the other was super tech. Are these a blip in the bleak landscape of corruption and collusion that we have lived with for 75 years since independence? Or is this going to be the beginning of change? That is what this column is going to discuss. So seven years ago, we had the Modi government come to power with a promise of clean administration, na khaunga, na khane dunga, and we look for change. Things haven't changed, have they? But these two orders, like I said, we cling to hope. So it looks like, you know, things are beginning to change or this is the start. First, I'm going to discuss this video con. The National Company Law Tribunal, which is NCLT Mumbai, which administers the bankruptcy law, passed a sweeping order on 30th August, which asked that all assets of the Tooth family of Videocon be frozen. This was a big blow because it asked Venugopal Dhut to file an affidavit with all his bank accounts in India abroad. It asked depositories to give a list of all the share certificates, asked bankers and resolution professionals to cooperate and ensure that all data about their assets, direct, indirect, all their holdings, jointly held family accounts should be disclosed and frozen, including bank lockers and anything else that may happen. Now, if implemented correctly, this could potentially unlock all the wealth that many big defaulter industrialists stash away or take out of companies. And when their companies go bankrupt, even though they owe tens of thousands of crores to banks, it's never accessed. So we'll wait a while to see what happens and how the video con order is implemented, whether it's done in spirit or it's just going to be more talk. Reason for my skepticism is that on 8 June, NCLT Mumbai had actually approved a resolution by top bankers to Vedanta to accept, believe it or not, a 95.85% haircut. That means out of the amount that they owed their outstanding loans, which were huge, about 64,838 crores, there was an offer from Twin Star Technologies, belonging to the Vedanta Group, to pay only 2,962 crores. That is less than 5%. Bankers were willing to take it. Now, if secured bankers are willing to take just that much, what happens to unsecured? They were not even going to get 1%. They're not even going to get half a percent. Virtually nothing. So some of the smaller banks were going to get less and these uh, creditors were going to get nothing approached the National Company Law Appellate Tribunal and got a stay order. Now, remember the NCLAT order also didn't come just on the appeal of these small guys. Venu Gopal Dhut has made an offer offering to pay half the amount, which is about 32,000 crore, and get all his companies, about 13 of them, out of the resolution process or bankruptcy process. This is astonishing and should anger all of us because it is in line with what the Vadawans of Divan Housing have done. There's no money forthcoming. Nobody is even attempting to get it. People are losing tens of thousands of crores there. So Vadawans of Divan Housing, the Ruyas of SR and the Sandesras of the Sterling Biotech Group had done exactly this. They were declared willful defaulters. They kept quiet for years while interest rates mounted without coughing up a single penny. And when they are on the verge of losing their companies, after there is a bid, just because the bidder has offered much less than they probably think it's worth, or if they think they can get away with offering a little more, they suddenly make this offer. Where is the money going to come from? And why don't we go after them and ask them that if you had this money, if you could raise this money, if you could make an offer and run the company, why haven't you paid the banks? Why did you turn into a willful defaulter in the first place? So obviously I'm skeptical. NCLT issued another order yesterday, even as I was writing this. 
But like I said, nothing changes. We wait and watch. But the order itself is so sweeping that an industrialist wrote to me that it's high time we see such such action in companies where any outstanding default is over a thousand crore and banks are willing to accept a 50% haircut. 50% mind you, not 95% as in this case. He thinks that this alone will lead to real fear among defaulters because currently, according to him and he should know, promoters collude with resolution professionals who are appointed under the Bankruptcy Act and take money out of their companies even this is after the defaults gone into bankruptcy while this bankruptcy process is on even those two to three years that it drags which it ought not to but it drags they take so much money out of the company will things stop will it happen that the nclt order is followed in spirit will anyone ask the dudes where did you offer thirty-one thousand crore from or will all our collusive and corrupt bankers who are hand in glove with big defaulters to give them more and more loans and evergreen their existing loans, they just get away all the time. Now let's come to the second order. This is Supertech Limited, a company which used to put full page ads in the papers and that's why I probably got media silence. On the same day, 30th August, as the Videocon order, the Supreme Court of India ordered the demolition of two 40 storied or are the twin towers of Supertech in Noida. This is in the Delhi region. The Supreme Court slammed the rampant unauthorized construction that has gone on in collusion with planning authorities and the order was passed by a bench of Justice D. Y. Chandrachud and M. R. Shah. Again, given the composition of the bench, given how hard hitting the order sounded, we have little ray of hope because we're clutching on to straws hoping that the system will change that will get cleaner now supertech limited has been told that it will have to demolish these two twin towers on its own it will have to pay homeowners their booking amount with 12 percent interest from the time this problem started and it will have to pay two crores to the resident welfare association for harassment this sounds a lot isn't it but it's not because you have to remember the saga that's gone on. It didn't happen overnight. In fact, the Supreme Court essentially has upheld a seven-year-old order of the Allahabad High Court, which had also ordered the demolition of these two towers. In fact, Supertech went to the Supreme Court and got a stay in, believe it or not, April 2014. And this drama, culminating in the High Court order, had started sometime around 2009, when the Residents' Welfare Association realized that Supertech had colluded with Noida planning authorities, done a lot of irregularities, flouted the rules, and the new plans were not even shared by the Residents' Welfare Association. So it's worth pondering that if Supreme Court makes, if this Supreme Court order, 12% and the booking amount, even makes up for the sharp increase in realty prices since 2009 to 2021, does it? And the bigger question, Will Supratech pay? Because Supratech may still have the money to do what all big and powerful people do, which is hire legal experts. And even though we as ordinary people naively think that when a case leads to a Supreme Court judgment, it's finally settled, it's not. Because smart, expensive lawyers find ways to keep breaking up the issue ask for a dilution of the order, ask for less stringency, multiple ways, and they are entertained by the courts. So they may go back and say, reconsider the severity of the order or something else. It also remains to be seen, and this is a bigger question. Does Supratech have the money? Does it have the resources? Will it pay? Or will it just declare bankruptcy? Because rather than paying huge amounts, that's what a lot of companies have been doing. This has happened in tens of thousands of cases where investors are ending up continuing to pay EMI, no sign of their house. They have paid up sometimes 85 to 90 percent, nearly 100 percent and not got possession. And they're going to be down to 20, 30 percent in this bankruptcy process. Again, a Supreme Court order has made them financial creditors. That, as we learned recently at Money Life and we had conducted other seminars, 
it is meaningless because financial creditors as i told you in the video con case also he had almost nothing if they were secured creditors they would probably have got a little more but that is another battle that they will have to take up to the supreme court but ordinary people are not rich not together and cannot afford really expensive legal advice that gets or manages to get these kind of orders like i said this supreme court order is being called historic has been called a wake up call for corrupt and corrupt builders and officials can i'm skeptical past experience suggests that this is actually delusional i'm going to give you a couple of examples to say why it doesn't work 1984 we had in mumbai posh 36 floor residential building pratibha apartments just four floors short of super super tech twin towers it was in a posh area of mumbai every celebrity and politician had an apartment there they had falsified the floor space index and area on the basis of which it is calculated and built 9 to 10 illegal floors after long battle the court ordered that the nine floors have to be demolished the legal challenge continued for 10 years after that finally they broke down those nine or 10 floors in the meanwhile real estate rules had been changed liberalized loosened so much that the people who owned it found it worth their while because they had to accommodate the people who had paid the builder for the other 10 floors so the entire 36 floor building was demolished finally in 2019 1984 to 2019 and maybe something else is going to come up that means that saga is still on did it make any dent on corruption absolutely nothing brazen illegality in in mumbai's real estate market which is not only the most expensive in india but probably among the most expensive in the world continues in fact shortly afterwards we had this adarsh housing society shockingly this is navy land that was going to be redeveloped for war widows but the actual owners were politicians bureaucrats powerful bureaucrats and as always very rich and influential people they managed to get all the permissions as they always do the scam came to light in 2010 enormous public money has been spent on a variety of investigations cbi enforcement directorate some people were arrested embarrassed the chief minister stepped down has anything really happened there is a judicial stay in 2018 which continues the order to be to demolish it still stands not resolved the most egregious of them was a campacola compound case this was a set of buildings built in what was called the campacola compound owned by pure drinks between can we going back to 1984 to 89 the builders constructed 35 illegal floors in a couple of buildings again in collusion with the municipal authorities nothing happened for 20 years suddenly the lease expired and all of it came tumbling out matter went to court and went to the high court the supreme court and they decided that a number of buildings in the compound out of 35 are illegal these residents knew but the real estate market in india is so murky so full of criminal elements and black money that everybody thought that it will get regularized as it always does in this case it didn't the supreme court was heartless and said We don't care if you've been living there for 20 years. We don't care if this is your life saving. You will have to go because an illegality is an illegality. Surprisingly, this is one case where public opinion was completely in favor of the people who were living at Camp Cola compound, and both the court and the government had to back down, had to find a way around it, and change the rules in order to allow it to stay. But guess what? Because this worked. In fact it became a ticket for all kinds of uh, regularizing of irregularities and they ordered the payment of a fee and a whole bunch of structures were officially regularized including by the BJP government that was in power just before this one so even in the supertech case the point is that nothing happens without collusion of three people officials politicians and the businessmen until the officials and politicians who enable this are punished there's no point in just punishing builders and buyers but in the supertech case also the supreme court hasn't really done anything about officials unless they made accountable nothing changes 
and here again there is no accountability on the part of those individuals you know they get suspended inquiries happen they get reinstated after 20 30 years in fact a lot of times with that pay why will corruption ever reduce why will people stop buying postings which the media regularly reports when this continues public records will show all punitive action against people who are rich and can afford top lawyers drags through the judicial system and is slowly diluted until both time and the severity become meaningless even the size of the penalty becomes less or when it is finally let off it is diluted in fact a recent news report has said that 212 corruption case cases being probed by the cbi are pending trial for 20 years as of december 2020 is there any chance of any meaningful orders at the end of it when the trial is complete whenever it does how many of those will even be alive it has happened in case after case in fact, in July 2019, I was one of those who was a little naive and thought that the cleanup of corporate India has begun seriously. I talked about people like the Sandesh Raj, Nira Modi, uh, Vijay Malia, and I mentioned how it looks as though the government, this government is different, it is serious about extradition and it will bring them back. But neither Nirav Modi, nor Vijay Malia, nor Mehul Choksi are here. In fact, Mehul Choksi made a monkey out of the government and its officials in the manner in which they went after him, sent a chartered jet to get him back and came back empty-handed. So I come back to the point that unless things change, unless officials who are responsible, unless people in fiduciary positions, people who are running exchanges or in charge of rating agencies, statutory auditors, not just builders, these officials needn't be in government. They are people whom we depend on who have a statutory and fiduciary responsibility to speak the truth. Unless they are held accountable and severely punished, nothing is going to change. And as long as these faceless and nameless officials get away and litigation drags on for decades and remains, remains really expensive and unaffordable for ordinary people, you will continue to have political gimmicks. We may talk about change, we may say, we may clutch at a Supreme Court order, but there's going to be no dent in the monumental corruption that's dragging down India. You want to change it? We, the people, will need to speak out. Thank you so much. If you like what you hear, spread the word and subscribe to Money Life. Thank you.